Welcome back to Creating Cooperative Kids. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. When I began looking for a preschool for my first child many years ago, someone said to me, don't enroll her in the Montessori school. They let kids write on the walls there. Now this type of comment helps reinforce the fact that a lack of knowledge on a particular topic can create fear and misinformation for many. On this segment of the show, I'm gonna find out what Dr. Maria Montessori had in mind back in 1907 when she taught the world about how important it is for children to learn at their own pace. With me in the studio today is Joanne Camerata Hirsch, director of the Longmeadow Montessori School in Massachusetts, and Cheryl Callahan, a teacher who works at the Longmeadow School. Welcome, ladies. Thank you Thank for being you. here. Thank you for having us. So I offered that, that a bit of misinformation, and it actually happened to me. It was true. And as soon as I heard that when I was a young parent, I go, oh, I'm not enrolling her there. We don't want to promote our children to write on the walls. And so for, it was a long time before I ever figured out that that person really, truly misled me. So I've asked you to come on the show today to help educate our parents about Montessori and, and what makes Montessori different from a regular preschool. So you know what? This is your show here. I want to know, uh, and, and folks want to know, the answer to that question. So how are you going to start us off? Well, I'll start off by saying it's absolutely true. Montessori is totally misunderstood by a great deal of the population. People believe that either it's too strict, you can hear a pin drop and no one's allowed to do anything, or it's absolutely chaotic. And the reality is there are programs like that, but there's also wonderful Montessori programs where teachers have set up boundaries and then within those boundaries, children are free to explore, and they learn by exploring. Okay, so, so the person who misguided me years ago was slanted towards the chaotic type of. Uh, and there uh, are. <laughs> so, there are many. So here's one question I would want to I would want to ask you, and especially if I was shopping for a school, how do you find out if the if your local Montessori school is one of those? What's the best way to do that? So you could pick the right kind Absolutely. of Montessori school. Well, what I tell all parents are come in and spend a morning with us. Come in and spend an afternoon with us. Um, we hold open houses, but I don't believe in an open house. I can stand and tell you anything that I think you want to hear. Come in, walk around the classrooms, hear how teachers are talking to children, how children are talking to each other, how the children are engaged with the Montessori materials, and if it feels right to you, if it feels right to you, then it's the right program for your child. So would you agree with me on what I said coming on to the segment that um, Maria Montessori's objective or what she tried to educate the world was that children do better when they are allowed to learn at their own pace? Is that true? Yeah. Right. Follow the child is... Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. She, she understood that um, they had a need um, and it, it's an inner desire and they want to touch the materials and they're drawn to the materials that they are in a sensitive period for. So something that is really calling to them is something they need to be working on. And, and I support that so much because I think there's magic inside the soul. And if we actually follow that magic rather than mandating and forcing it, but it, now that we've said that, it's frightening. Think of all the children who go through at the pace they're told to go through and and where they may be losing out on opportunity to grow internally and, and for the brain to, to uh, connect the right neurons at the right time. Mm -hmm. is, is that true? Absolutely. And all of the materials lead to the other materials. So they are naturally allowed to discover and um, experiment and learn and grow at their own pace. And it follows through at their pace through the curriculum. Okay, so I want to, you, you've brought some, some items here, some props or some toys or some things that you use in the education. Before we go to that, though, I want to ask you, uh, I understand that it's now, this is the year, the 25th anniversary of your Montessori school, and you and I were talking uh, earlier, and, and from what you're telling me, uh, the parents of a group of children wanted you to create this special kind of school. Is that true? It is true. I um, was hired to take over for another woman who was running a school and actually died. And what happened was I went in and had ideas that I wanted to put into place. And it wasn't quite the way she had done it. She was an elderly woman. 
and the parents loved what I was doing and the children loved what I was doing but the two people who hired me really had in mind that I was going to do things just like her my vision of Montessori was to make it for the 21st century I wanted to bring in foreign language I wanted to bring in character counts I wanted to develop an art and music program um, and when I shared this with the parents they said great we want you to start your own school and I actually said well that's great but I am paying off college loans and they said we'll put up the money we'll find you a building and thus Meadow Montessori was started. That's awesome so 25 years celebrating a long time it is. and of course I have to share with the audience uh, you and I work together quite yes. a bit because uh, uh, Joanne refers uh, parents to me who need extra help and I'm always ready and willing to help at, as I can at yeah. Joanne's school to help with the whole aspect of educating parents. Okay, we've only got a couple minutes left, but uh, you want to tell us a little bit about what you brought here? Well, yes, but first I want to say what makes the Montessori program very different is that you could walk in and see different children working with different materials. It's very different from a, a private or a public preschool program where the teacher is in front of the group and everyone in the group has to be doing the exact same thing. And that's really what you said before about each child working at, we call it their own level of readiness. So the materials we brought, um, you can see math materials, you can see literacy, the letter Z, and fun objects that the children want to touch. Um, sensorial materials, children are observing, they're looking at sizes and shapes and order, and everything based on 10, which feeds into the math work, the decimal system. Um, every child I know likes to play with water, but rather than just playing with water, they would pour water around a landform, and I happen to bring the island, and they start to understand what an island is. Um, Cheryl, why don't you? There are a little bit of the practical life are things that, that's the backbone of the Montessori curriculum, and it was um, seeing things that parents used at home, but children weren't allowed to touch, like glass and things like that, and it's all child-sized. So those really do go on our shelf. They really do learn how to use them, and they don't break them. They, they handle them with care because they're, they're taught and they're, they learn and they're so excited to be able to do those things. So. Well, I think I, what I'm hoping, if, if parents don't listen to anything we say, the, the most important thing I think is, is the exploration and when the child's yeah. ready for it because I think that's what creates the neural pathways. Okay. When they're ready to explore water or certain shapes, I think the neurons fire full in, in a healthy way when they're at the right point of, of what you're offering them. And that's what makes Montessori great. Well, um, unfortunately, we're out of time, but I thank you so much thank for coming you. in. Thank and you. Thank uh, so congratulations much. on your anniversary. Thank and I look you. forward to working with you more in the future. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. There are so many aspects of a child's learning process that they are key to development. But what about teaching young children to read? How active of a role should a caregiver take to help a child to develop this skill? In my next segment, we're going to meet the co-authors of a new book that provides some guidance to parents and teachers on reading aloud and how to make it work successfully. Don't go away. We'll be right back.